The Creality Ender 3 V2 printer basket case. Got this on Marketplace. Extremely cheap. This is what I got. We're going to go through this coming up. I'm Roger and welcome to the loft above the shop and what I have sitting in front of me right here is the Creality Ender 3 V2 printer, 3D printer, a what I call a basket case. I don't know if this works, if all the parts are here, I have no idea. I will say though I found this in Marketplace extremely cheap. I mean extremely cheap. If nothing else I've got some spare parts. But uh, I'm going to put this thing together if all the parts are here. I'm not even sure all the, sure all the screws are here because it looks like there's some hardware missing, but I do have a hardware box of spare parts. We're going to put this together, find out what exactly is wrong with it, if anything. I can see that this has been used before because the uh, extruder has filament in it and it's all messed up there. And in fact, the Bowden tube still has a piece of filament in it. So somebody used this at one time, I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to put it together and we're going to find out. Okay, got to put together here. Uh, there were a lot of screws and bolts missing. I had to get into my uh, little hardware reserve. I got all the screws I needed for this. I have not powered it on yet. I did notice a few things as I was putting this together. Uh, Took me about an hour, of course that included having to scrounge and trying to find the right bolts. But the uh, the bed has a glass bed on it here. It has some gouges in it, so whoever had it before uh, obviously didn't do something right. The something else I noticed was that the nozzle on the hot end, there was a large glob of plastic that had gotten up underneath the rubber cover that goes over the nozzle. So I'm sure I'm going to have to replace that nozzle. But in order to do that, I really need to heat the hot end up first so that I don't uh, damage anything when I try to take that nozzle out because I don't know how much plastic is cobbled up inside that. That may be the problem. I've not powered this on yet, and I'm about to do so. So we'll see what happens here when I turn the power on. Well, the screen's coming up. So let's uh, prepare. Let's go down here and see if it'll auto home. I haven't leveled the bed yet or anything, so hopefully nothing crashes here. I do have it pulled down pretty far. I need to get that uh, hot end cleared up first. But I wanted to see if it went home. I haven't tied any cables up or anything yet because I wanted to see exactly what I was getting in here, here first. And it did not crash. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll raise this back up and mess with that hot end. Okay, I'm going to take this fan cover off here first so I can see what I'm doing. And if you've never had this off before, it's just a couple of screws at the top. And then the bottom just kind of snaps off of there, opens up like a little door. And it'll look like that. Oh, here's our hot end. Here's the rubber guard that goes around it. I'm going to take that off because I'm going to be changing the nozzle. But first I need to heat that up. Turn this back on now. Okay, we're booted up. We'll go over here to prepare and we'll preheat PLA. 
It's also let me know if the bed actually heats up. This will be a good little test. And I need to grab me another nozzle. Okay, we're up to temperature. I've got me a spare nozzle here. Um, I have a little socket here I use to take these out. This is six M&Ms if you're keeping track. And I know that's hot. So we can see if... Come on. Oh, that comes out nice and easy. Sometimes they really get stuck in there. You definitely don't want to touch that. I need the pliers. Okay, I've got my new one here. I'll just stick that in the socket. Okay, we'll shut this back down. I'll put the fan cover back on, try to find some filament, do a little bed leveling. We'll see if we can get this thing to work. I got this auto home. We'll go over here and disable the steppers. And see where we are for level here. Regulation piece of notebook paper, and that is just way too tight. Wow, I can't even get close over here. This is so far off, I can't even begin to get close on that one. Try a couple other ones here. Yeah, it's just like way off. Okay, if you've never had the base off your printer before, it looks like this. Take this aluminum base off. I took the glass off first. The, uh, the stock spring that comes on the Ender 3 V2 looks like this. There's an upgraded spring, which is much stronger and stiffer, that looks like this. And this is what I'm going to be putting in there. I just happen to have an extra set of these. So I'm going to get those put in. Uh, I noticed that uh, one of these springs, and I don't even know where it rolled off to, was just the stock spring was so collapsed that it would never I, I suppose I could try to stretch it out again but we're not going to go that route we're just going to put the upgraded springs in and these are just a matter of replacing what you took out there's no big trick to it the only place you have to watch a little bit is in the corner where this mounts because it's it, it gets a little tricky but it's not impossible to do just got to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, so back to the bed leveling process here. We're going to auto home here first. I've got these uh, the bed set pretty low, so hopefully this nozzle will not crash into the glass. And it did push the glass, but not real bad. So we'll disable the steppers here. And if you've never done this, you want the uh, paper to just touch the nozzle and have just a little bit of resistance and on your first go on this it's going to be very time consuming because once you change one corner the opposite corner changes too. Fairly certain that back's going to be too high so before I even try to push it back I'm going to lower it some more. Better to do that than to be scraping on the glass. And there we're getting close. And here we got a big gap yet. There it's just starting to touch. Back up here. Back over here. Too tight back here. As I said, once you, when you change one corner, the opposite corner will change. With it, you're going to have to keep going back and forth and doing this fine adjusting. And each time you do it, it'll be less and less of an adjustment. But take your time and get it right. And there we got it. So now we'll take this back to home.
Yeah, I did find a scrap thing of film. I don't know how tangled up it's going to be. This is just going to be for kind of a test. So we get the extruder loaded up here. We've got the hot end preheating, but it's not up to temperature yet. I'm just getting this started through the Bowden tube. I will be changing this to Capricorn tubing. Okay, and I got to let that hot end warm up. I'm going to disable the steppers here so I can raise the z-axis up so that I, when I push my filament through I can see it come out. But got to wait for it to get up to temperature. Okay, we're up to temperature here so I'm going to push some more filament through till it comes, starts coming out the nozzle. There we go. Rid of that. Take this back home. And I need to come up with a file to print because there's no card with this. Okay, I've got a little bed leveling file in here. We'll let that go. We'll see how that does. Hopefully that won't drag on the bed. I did clean the bed. Okay, stopping this because as you can see, the uh, filament is not sticking to the bed, even though I did clean that. So we need to uh, do a little something with this. This is a product called Glance. It's similar to Windex. My bed temperature I have set at 60 because it's very cool up here in the loft. I always keep my bed temperature a little higher. Of course, filament temperature is set for 200. And what we're going to do now is a little glue stick. Just one of these. Okay, take this back to prepare and preheat PLA, then auto home. Let that heat up and we'll go back to trying to print that again. Okay, we're back to temperature.
So there it is. I have another working printer. Um, I need to uh, do some modifications to it. I will be putting a dual gear extruder on there. I'll change the Bowden tube here to Capricorn tubing. I'll take this top spool holder off, put a side spool holder on. And I, in fact, I've got a couple of them printed sitting over yonder there in the corner just for that purpose. Otherwise, uh, got another printer, and I mean really cheap. Got to do a little better cable management on it. I haven't done any of the tie-up or anything yet. So I just wanted to see if I could get this thing to work. So, what was wrong with it? Okay, I'm missing some hardware. That could have happened because whoever had this before may have just got frustrated, took it apart, and threw it in a box. Because literally when I got this, it was just thrown in a box. But I also got it very, very cheap. Thinking if nothing else, I'd have some spare stepper motors and parts and stuff. But I have a working printer. Uh, the springs, leveling springs, were really crushed down to, I mean, almost nothing. So the person that had been attempting to use this wasn't really sure about what they were doing and didn't look at any other videos or even really follow the instructions close to have the spring smash that far down because that's really scrunched. Okay, what else did I have on here? Of course, we had a little problem with uh, adhesion, but the glue stick took care of that right away. The hot end. I think when the uh, was this was originally put together, the Bowden tube was not down all the way tight against the nozzle, and it let some uh, plastic leak out between the Bowden tube and the nozzle. That will always clog your hot end up. The other thing I saw was there was so much plastic that had been built up around the nozzle itself on the outside of the hot end that indicated that someone was trying to print with this way too close to the bed and the plastic was just squirting back up because I had to clean a big glob of that out of there and that's one of the reasons I replaced the nozzle. I could also see that that end of that nozzle had been dragging on the glass and there is a couple spots on the glass here where it has scored pretty bad. so. So far, this is what we got. I'll do a few more mods on this, and I'll probably uh, post another video once I got the other modifications made. Otherwise, here's my cheap, and I do mean cheap, Ender 3 V2 printer. Got it working. Got anything out of this? Appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Wise, I'm Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.